welcome to Watch Symposium, I'm Austin. All right, so I haven't even brought up this, uh, this topic, and I can't believe I haven't, because it's, it's, it's huge, it's a huge topic. Now, I talked about in another, another video about the paradigm shift uh, going from the aluminum bezels to the serochrome bezels, and how, you know, I think part of the reason was to stimulate sales, to breathe new life into decades old models. But what I'm gonna talk about today is another way that Rolex controls the market, and that's by limiting supply. They're notorious for this. You know, I think everybody knows that um, the Serochrome Daytonas and the, the Batmans, you know, if they put their mind to it, they could, they could make enough of those to satisfy demand, but they don't, and they do it on purpose. You know, if you're, if demand outweighs supply, it kind of creates this fervor, you know, this fervor wh wh where people faced with the opportunity to buy one of these pieces would jump on it when they otherwise might not. And I can tell you that I've sort of experienced this recently. Um, you know I went to Fukuoka and you went, you know that I saw BLNRs um, for two, three thousand more than, than retail. I went to an AD. I asked how much is a BLNR? You could get one. 918,000 yen. Down the street, gray market, the equivalent of 12,000, 3,000 more for a new one. I was thinking about it and I was asking myself what I would do if I went to an AD and they had, you know, earlier in the morning put out a BLNR. And if you had asked me two days ago, I'd probably say, I'd go to the bank and I'd get the money and I would buy it. Now, I've kind of sobered up a little since then and sort of reflected on if that's what I would do. A couple days ago, you know, if that were to happen and I had three beers in my stomach, it totally would have happened. Um, because I was so affected by seeing those, those gray market prices that I would automatically think I'm getting a deal, uh, a, a deal, getting the opportunity to pay 918,000 yen, about $9,000 for a BLNR. Um, I thought about it and I thought, you know, okay, seriously, like in this, I've got to really imagine this situation happening and, and, and I thought, okay, I would, I would buy it and, and okay, what would I do? Uh, would, I, would I try to sell it immediately? You know, would I go to a gray market and just try to flip it and pocket a thousand? And that would be the wise thing to do. I don't know if you could do it, but it would be the wise thing to do. Um, it would be somewhat unfortunate because it's not like I could even claim to have had one. I mean, the, the, I'd have to leave the stickers on it and I could play with a little play with it a, a little bit and touch it and rotate the bezel, but I, I, I really couldn't use it. Um, it would have to go straight from the AD to the, the gray market. Um, I can see taking it home and looking at it and, oh, those stickers coming off. Unless those stickers come off, it's over. I mean, that's, uh, yeah, you can't claim it's new anymore, really. Um, um, and uh, how would I feel? Well, I think when I, if, if this scenario took place, I think I probably would feel uh, a little bit jaded, a little bit um, uh, taken, tricked. Um, I, I would have felt like a sucker, like I fell for it. Um, like, I had panicked and I gotta get this 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 hot GMT because this is a deal. I'm saving I'm saving three thousand dollars by buying it new at an AD. And all of a sudden I uh, would have a new uh, brand new uh, watch that fun, funnily enough funnily enough funny enough I have sort of issues with those polished middle links. Um, I have some serious issues with those. Um, so. I've sort of experienced this, you know, 
what it feels like to be influenced by uh, by uh, supply and demand and a lack of supply and the perception that demand is way up. Um, it, and it all happened in my head, uh, sort of imagining this, this scenario. Um, you know, the gray market is uh, very strong because of well, what Rolex does, limiting supply. Um, it keeps the brand strong. If you're not a Rolex person and you don't have a Rolex watch, then um, I imagine hearing about this could kind of piss you off and you could say, you know, screw Rolex. Um, if you have a Rolex, what Rolex is doing uh, probably protects your investment. If you have a BLNR, uh, you probably don't want Rolex to flood the market because the second they do, um, they're going to go from 12,000 at the gray market dealer to nine or less, probably less, because you could get a brand new one at an AD for nine, right? So, um, you know, I guess if you want a BLNR, it's a frustrating thing. If you have a BLNR, you think Rolex for it. If you have another kind of Rolex, uh, you realize they're sort of rigging the system and there's something sort of weird and, um, I don't know, uh, I'm not gonna say unsavory, but but uh, uh, manipulative about it, I guess. Uh, but, uh, you know, really it, it it's little things like this that protects the brand and, and makes these Rolex sports watches not the next uh, ubiquitous man on the moon. You know, I saw that uh, a couple months ago when I was, uh, you know, I was here on a trip and, and I saw just man on the moon after man on the moon on the used market. And, you know, there were so many men on the moon that uh, I, I thought, wow, if I actually did want one, it would be really hard choosing one. I mean, what, what, you know, all prices, all types, all, you know, um, that's not the case with uh, you know, a lot of the sports uh, Rolexes, the steel sports Rolexes. Anyway, um, what's your take on that? Manipulating the market. Um, it's good for business and you know, being a charity and really kind of non-profit, Rolex can afford to do that um, if they had you know, uh, stockholders that wanted sales. They couldn't really do that. Uh, they're, uh, that's a luxury they have that really Swatch Group doesn't have. Swatch Group has to pump out those watches. They need to make money. And, and with each new anniversary issue, uh, Speedy, the brand is devalued. So uh, anyway, let me know what you think about that. Um, Rolex manipulating the market by dribbling out uh, those, those uh, hot pieces. Thanks for watching. See you next time.